G'day trendsetters, before I kick off today's video, first a word from the video sponsor, FSA Full Speed Ahead. To flare or not to flare? That is the question. Whether you're into flared handlebars for your gravel bike or something more traditional, FSA has you covered with handlebars built from aluminium, aluminium or carbon fiber in compact drop and everything else. They also have a complete range of products for your gravel bike, including these fantastic FSA Gossamer Pro cranks with the 4630 AGX chain rings, meaning you can climb some serious walls during your next gravel cycling adventure. You can check out their entire range of products at fullspeedahead.com. Now it's time to crack on with the video. G'day trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclist and I'm coming to you today with another potentially interesting and crazy project bike. Before you is a soft ride power curve. Soft ride is also the company that produced this crazy beam configuration that you see atop the frame that is designed to provide a measure of suspension. I'll cover that more momentarily. Mid to late 1990s, it is the mountain bike variant of the soft ride line of bicycles. The company also produced road bikes and triathlon type bicycles. However, they ceased production of bicycles around about 2007 and have now turned their attention towards bicycle racks. Love them or hate them, the beam you see atop this bike was a very popular item during the 1990s and was picked up by many big name frame manufacturers for incorporating into their own frame designs. When the original version of the soft ride power curve mountain bike variant first appeared during the early 1990s, it sparked a big debate of suspending the rider versus suspending the bike. It's almost akin to what you have going on nowadays with the suspension of gravel bikes. You have people who love the concept and you have those angry haters who don't like any kind of change whatsoever. I've never had the opportunity to ride a frame of this design. Essentially, the beam is constructed from carbon fiber. There's a lot of foam inside, almost like a sandwich in between the the two pieces of the carbon fiber beam and obviously it's designed to flex. Now it's going to really require someone who's smooth at pedaling because there could be a lot of bobbing action I'm expecting which I understand was a complaint and I did notice quite a bit of bobbing action on some of the blokes I saw riding the road variant of this bike way back during the mid 1990s. There's also something akin to the suspension sag effect when you first sit in the bike, it's like your suspension fork it drops down, same here with the beam. So I sit my ass onto the saddle, it's going to drop down, so I need to set the height above where my saddle would ordinarily sit and kind of hope for the best and play around. So I'm either going to love this crazy project bike or have some serious regrets. I need to give mention that this project bike wouldn't even be possible if it weren't for a visit to one of my local bike shops, namely Bikes and More of Gainesville, Florida. You can check that shop's website linked in the description below. Cut a long story short, they were clearing out stock of all manner of goodies from their business. I happened to pay an ungodly low sum of money for this awesome fun project bike. So thank you to Paul and the lads at Bikes and More for making this project bike even possible. Which brings me to what I'm going to do with this bike. Namely, I'm going to convert it into a drop bar mountain bike. This is not the first time I've converted a mountain bike into a drop bar frame. Linked in the description below, you can see a Linsky bike I converted way back in 2013. Although that was based around 700C slash 29er. Now I already have ideas for the group set I'm going to use on this bike. Because one challenge I'm going to face is with the crank set. Now this is a 3x7 Shimano STX grip set, so a triple in other words, and the bottom bracket is 73 millimeters wide, being mountain bike English thread. I'm planning to use a 2x crank set and an appropriate 2x compatible front derailleur, so hopefully I can find something to work. I'm pretty sure I have that in my stash of parts, and obviously drop bars and other goodies to get on this bike and hopefully turn into something really fun to ride on the gravelly roads less traveled. Now more than likely the original suspension stem on this bike is going to be replaced with a rigid item and I'm hoping to rely on some very nice Paneracer Gravel King SK tires and the hard to find 26 by 2.0 size 
in the brown side wall. Fingers crossed I can find myself a set. They should provide a nice suspension effect with their voluminous tire casings and naturally they'll be set up tubeless. And I might try and find myself a nice pair of 26 inch wheels. They'll be 135 space to the rear end, basically older mountain bike wheels because this bike was from a time when 26 inch wheels were the norm on mountain bikes. So that's it for now. A brief look into my next insane, silly, what have you project bike. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cycles YouTube channel for interesting content such as this. No bullshit drama, gravel bike reviews, other product reviews, ride experience videos, and other madness. That's how you ask. That is extremely impolite. Really? As all of it is released to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.